outside the windows, so I can tell that I've been walking for a long time. But the long time I've spent walking has all been in vain, as up to now I'm still trapped in this endless corridor. I came up with the idea of leaving this place through the window, but when I opened it, the only thing I saw was dazzling sunshine. Everything I'm looking for, flowers, plants, trees, buildings, even the ground, is nowhere to be seen. I don't know how high I am off the ground. Normally, no matter how high the floor is, flowers, plants, and buildings on the ground can still be seen. However, looking out from the windows here, I saw nothing except for the deep blue sky and golden sunshine. I keep wondering how it's possible as I look outside the window. I don't dare to think about what might happen to me if I jump out of the window. So I have to give up on the thought and stare ahead and keep walking. Penguin onesie! How cute! As long as I don't stay put or retrace my steps, I eventually will get to the end of this corridor. Although the corridor isn't straight, it's the only road in sight. Panda and Cookie Monster! Kawaii! I have two choices. One is to go forward and the other is to turn back. However, going into a walled up room is pointless and beyond discussion. So I believe I can reach the end if I go along. I stop unconsciously and smell a much stronger scent of blood. The smell is too strong to breathe, but nothing happens around me. Suddenly the faded fear clutches at me even more strongly. Could it be that I've come to the storage place where the dismembered body is being kept? Or is it the place where the murder is going on? Suppressing this horrible thought, I find cold sweat breaking out on my forehead. The sweat deepens my fear. I stand in the middle of the corridor stiffly and watch the surroundings closely. Suddenly a cold and sharp sound is heard in the quiet corridor. Besides the sharp noise, the sound of liquid splattering and a girl's scream can also be heard. The scream fills every corner of the corridor. At that moment, the room seems to tremble. After the scream dies down, the corridor returns to a state of terrified silence, just like nothing ever happened. I find myself trembling from the shock and fear. I was able to determine where the scream came from. It came from the room beside me. What happened in there? Judging from that scream, it's natural to think about the brutal murder of that girl. The cruel scene of dismemberments of that girl emerges in my mind. My fear is reaching its limits. What should I do? Okay, so I get to make choices. Okay. So I can enter the room or I can go forward. Now, by the way, you guys, um, if you guys want me to play a different game or you get bored with this, let me know. Because my first, like, impressions are this is going to be a reader, just like a really pretty one. I don't know for sure, though. But I do have five other games I have lined up to play. So if you guys want me to change, let me know before, you know, we get too far into this. Okay, so I can enter the room or go forward. Come on, we're entering the room, of course. Achievement unlocked. A difficult decision. The scream of that girl still echoes in my ears. I may save her if I enter the room now. I can't turn a blind eye when someone is in danger. So I decide to follow that sound and enter the room. Later, I push the door open. <clears throat> After going in, I see a broken room and great dense white fog.
Yeah, it would be better if Casper was reading with me, I agree. My eyesight blurs upon entering the white fog. If someone were to assault me now, I would be doomed. But how? But now I can't get distracted by these thoughts. I try to restrain my fear and panic and look for people in the room. It's really quiet. I carefully walk around the room to try and find the source of the scream. But after a while, to my surprise, I find nothing here. How come? Am I wrong? Is It's impossible. I heard the sound loud and clear, and it was quite near me. It's no use staying here anyway. I'd better go out. I go back to the corridor. I'd rather leave here as soon as possible than look for the source of the scream. Therefore, I decide to go along and find the exit as soon as possible. What? I see a girl's figure when I look ahead in the corridor, but it disappears immediately. Someone is indeed here. Judging from that figure, it must be a girl. If so, the sound I heard earlier makes sense. What happened to her? I must chase her down. Yeah, hot chick, let's chase her down. Seems normal. I'm in full gear to run towards the end of the corridor, for there's not only an exit, but also a mysterious girl there. Thunder blasts outside the room, and it begins to rain. If I can't get out soon, things will get messier. The strong lightning helps me see clearly which room the girl goes in. She must know the way out. Okay, I must chase her down and clear my doubts. I rush to that room. I clearly saw that girl disappear into the room. I can't be wrong this time. I take a deep breath and open the door. It's the same room. How? What the hell? I'm shocked by the bloody scene. The whole room is covered in blood, which I have never seen. The strong smell of blood tests my limits. I start feeling sick. I throw up badly. Ew. As miserable as I am, I still don't want to leave until I find that girl. I feel much better after vomiting most of the stuff out of my system and pull myself together to closely look at the room. Then suddenly, I see... Oh, hey, baby. Nanami? Are you Nanami? This girl is Nanami Shio, whom I knew since childhood. I'm a little embarrassed to call her my childhood sweetheart. She doesn't seem to recognize me and stands there at a loss. I can't help wondering why she is here. I feel somehow completely at a loss coming here, but why is she here? Nanami Shiro? Get naked. Oh, I mean, I call her again loudly, and this time she responds. She slowly turns towards me, but her look is full of fear. I feel cold and stiff when she stares at me. I don't know what to say. <laughs> he got stiff when she stared at him. <laughs> Nanami Shiro, are you okay? What happened? Uh, she does not respond and stands stiffly. Yeah, you want to see Y's origin? I can do that. Nanami. Do you remember me? I'm Kakashi. Kakashi? After I tell her who I am again, she finally talks, which comforts me a little. Yes? Uh. Nanami, what happened to you? Uh. Again, there is an awkward silence. She looks away and keeps silence. Nanami, could you answer my questions? 
She remains silent and still, no matter what I ask. What happened to her? She isn't the Nanami I knew. I remember she was a lovely and kind girl. Judging from her expression, she must be horrified. It is inevitable that her character would change under such an environment. People have fragile spirits and can easily be scared in a strange environment. What's more, this place is filled with blood and horrible sounds. Anyone would be freaked out easily under such circumstances. Nanami Shio may have already seen many scary scenes, judging by her expression on her face. Nanami is standing there and looking around with a disturbed expression. Ah, I finally think of a way to break the awkward silence. The smell of blood doesn't weaken, but deepens during the whole time. Nanami! I call her once again loudly, but she remains standing still. It appears that the only way of getting her out of this bloody place is by forcing her out with me. Suddenly there's a strange sound in the corridor. The scary sound creeps me out. There's no doubt that Nanami is in great shock. I can clearly see that she is trembling. I can feel that danger is approaching us. If we stay here, then real danger will befall us. Since Nanami Shio isn't injured, the smell of blood must be coming from somewhere else. I'd better check out the room first. The only place that hasn't been checked is the place where Nanami is standing, so I need to approach her first. Nanami, don't move. I'll come over. No! Don't come here! When I'm about to come over to her, Nanami screams at me all of a sudden. The thunder blasts again. I'm totally shocked by her scream and the sudden thunder. Bitch. I flinch and can't move one step forward. I want to step forward, but because of the fear, I can't control my legs. Nanami, don't be afraid. You'll be fine with me. Even though I say this to comfort her, I'm filled with fear too. I feel like I don't know her at all and have no idea of what's going to happen. Uh... Nanami. I notice she is crying with tears dripping from her cheeks. She must be really scared now. I should rush over to protect her right now. Nanami. Don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. I start to comfort her while moving towards her slowly. Uh... This time, she doesn't strongly reject me. Instead, she stands there and cries. I promise I will take you out of here. And the bitch disappears. She is my childhood sweetheart. I can't sit idly by without lending a helping hand. I come to her without acknowledgement. She can't stop crying, and tears keep dripping down. Nanami is very adorable even while crying. I suddenly have an urge to hug her and kiss her. Ah, what am I thinking at this critical moment? Now we are still in danger. My mind can't be occupied with her loveliness right now. Nanami, are you okay? Uh... I try to bring her back to reality. I grab her shoulder with one hand and pat her face with the other. But Nanami still has no reaction, and she doesn't even look at me. The sight of her helplessness, helplessness tears at my heart. After wiping her tears, I start to check every corner of the room. Ah! Some deformed remains are pitted in the corner behind Nanami. Who's, whose are these? Now I'm taken aback. I find the dead, 
the dead's four limbs cut into pieces and their heads